This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. I, and now here I am back at the keyboard, typing again. Not merely because I'm in a better place, though I feel that I am, but because that rough year brought me to a place where I finally understood the ending. I came to the very, very, very hard realization that my mental health journey doesn't have an ending. I'm not fixed. I may never be fixed, but it's okay that I'm not. I may never be able to repair all of my brokenness, but I can love myself in spite of my brokenness. I understand that now. So even though my journey hasn't come to an end, I have come to the end of the story I want to share with you. Which leaves us only one question. Where to begin? Honestly, we could pick any number of points. We could start with me throwing myself onto a community theater stage to get the love and approval of strangers that I never got at home. We could start with my grandma Pat chasing my naked mom out of the house with a butcher knife. Given what we know about how generational trauma works, we could start in Civil War era Missouri with my maternal great-great-great-grandfather's drinking problem. Or maybe try my dad's side in colonial New England and start with my great 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 grandmother being put on trial for witchcraft. That could be fun. But I don't know that we need to go back that far. This story, the one I want to tell here, starts out the same way a lot of stories do nowadays. It starts with a ping. Prologue. The way things work. Austin, Texas, August 2017. My phone let out a ping. I reached into my pocket, pulled my phone out, and clicked on the notification to see an email from my agents back in Los Angeles. It was about an audition for the lead role in the new DC superhero movie, Shazam. It looked interesting, but I immediately saw a problem. I knew the Shazam character a bit. As a kid, I'd always been more of a Marvel comic book fan than a DC comic book fan, but even among DC fans, Shazam, or Captain Marvel as he was originally known, is a bit of a niche character. He's Billy Batson, the 15-year-old kid who only has to say a magic word, Shazam, and he's instantly transformed into a superhero, which is pretty much every kid's dream. I also knew that Shazam has an arch nemesis, Black Adam, who's basically Shazam's bizarro world twin. The role of Black Adam had recently been cast, and he was going to be played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, former WWE world champion and current biggest action movie star in the world. Obviously, it was not lost on me that The Rock and I do not look like twins. It seemed to me like they were probably looking for a John Cena type of guy. I read over the email a couple of times, thought about it for a bit, then emailed back. Aren't they looking for dudes that are at the very least super jacked, if not super famous, for this? I asked. And God bless the assistant, whose reply might as well have been the shrug emoji. It felt like my agency was throwing me a bone, trying to make me feel like I was in the mix for big projects while knowing full well that I had no shot of getting the job. So I declined, saying I didn't want to waste everyone's time. And that was that for me and Shazam. Wasn't meant to be. Was never going to happen. On to the next thing. Or maybe there wouldn't be a next thing. I can say now that this was my real fear. It had been five years since my TV show Chuck had been canceled by NBC. I'd worked steadily since, but my phone wasn't ringing off the hook with major offers. I was secretly afraid that my run as an actor was all but finished. On top of that, while most of my friends were off getting hitched and settling down, my marriage had imploded, just like every other relationship I'd ever had. I was closing in on 37, alone, with no family. I packed up my entire life into a U-Haul and moved to Austin from Los Angeles with big dreams that were going to change my life. Dreams that had given me a newfound sense of mission and purpose. But now I was beginning to question whether I'd made a terrible mistake. What I can say, in hindsight, is that I was suffering from a tremendous amount of anxiety at the time. I had, in fact, been wrestling with anxiety and depression and fear and self-loathing my entire life. I just hadn't known it. I knew that I got sad and that I had my ups and downs, but I 100% did not think of myself as someone with serious mental health issues. I didn't know what anxiety and depression really were, at least not from a clinical point of view. When I finally did learn the depths of their meaning, it was a revelation. Wait a minute. If this is what anxiety is, then this is what I've been feeling almost every waking moment for most of my life. 
Up until that summer, I'd always managed to white-knuckle my way through my problems, self-medicating and finding ways to keep myself propped up without...